Beta-phosphatium to calcium is an alloplastic synthetic material. It means that it is a type of material that can fulfill all the main clinical and biological requirements when we need to do any sort of uh, GBR, that means uh, guided bone regeneration. Also, we should say that uh, beta-PCP is one of the most uh, uh, documented material and we have many studies regarding the use of beta-PCP in uh, several indications of use and also it is well documented the amount of the full resorption of it. One very interesting aspect of the beta phosphatium to calcium is also the rate of the resorption compared to the bone formation. Because in this study what we can clearly see is that at the beginning the autogenous bone that has always been considered as a, the gold standard has a perfect bone formation, but after a certain period of time the final result is, because of the resorption, that we have more bone formation when a loplastic material, and especially beta phosphatium tricalcium, has been used. Also, what we have to uh, uh, clearly understand is the importance of the surface characteristic of this kind of material. And uh, it is important to see that the macro and micro structures of the granules of the beta phosphatium to calcium is really a perfect material that will allow us to have a right uh, resorption and in the same time the right bone formation. And uh, one more interesting aspect of the RTR is the different available packages that we can have. For example, when we do a normal post-extraction treatment, the use and the application of cones allows the dentist to have a very friendly use of material and it will be very easy to put the material itself inside the bond defect. Also, we have the traditional granules of the pure beta phosphatium to calcium that can be presented as a syringe as well as a traditional form of packaging. Among all of the existing studies of beta phosphatum to calcium, we have also two recent studies done by my group, that is a multicentric studies, and we will see now some of the cases that we use to publish in these studies. The first one is a very easy and simple con use for keep the bridge dimension after a normal extraction. What is really important to understand, every time in which we use this kind of materials is the perfect respect of the surface characteristics. That's why I really strongly recommend to have some appropriate and specific instruments in order to compact the material inside the defect avoiding the risk of damaging the surface and the profile of the granules. Also, we need to remind that our material is an osteoconductive material. So what we do expect is a full resorption of it, and that's why we don't have to compact, to press too much this material inside the defect because we want to keep the right space between granules in order to allow the new cells growth 
and the blood supplies comes between the cradles. And also in these uh, X-rays, what we can see is uh, a sort of over treatment of the defect. When we use this kind of products, we have not to limit our treatment to the previous rich dimension, but we have to put something more because we have to consider the resorption dimension of the material. And what we expected to have as a final result is exactly the previous level of the reach. In the following case, we can see the use of syringe. When we use the syringe, it is important to take all the advantages of this uh, kind of packaging. Syringes comes with a sort of filter at the top of it, so we have to keep this filter, we have to move to the effect and to aspire some blood in order to let the granules be weighted by this, the blood. It is not necessary to have blood along all the syringe, but all the granules that we expect to use need to be weighted by the blood of the patient. After that, we take the filter off and directly with the syringe we move to the defect and we inject the granules directly inside the defect. And once again, we finalize our treatment putting and compacting the material in the appropriate way with the right instruments. A final suture is always recommended. Also, if uh, because of the right kind of material, we don't need to cover completely the defect. And the sutures is only intended to approximate the two sides of the flap. Another case of the use of the syringe is uh, nice to show how when we use RTR compared to some other materials, uh, we have a very good healing of the soft tissue. It means that RTR is not against or is not in contrast with a proper first closure healing of the uh, flap. And this is really important for us because this is one of the most important moments during the regeneration treatment. One more lovely case is the use of granules in a sinus lift. In this case, we had no primary in, uh, intention uh, of uh, situation of the implant, so we had to put the implant together with the RTR. And uh, after a proper follow-up of the case, what is uh, lovely to see is uh, that as a final result, the ESQ coefficient of this implant that, uh, I want to underline, totally positioned in a regenerated material, the final ESQ is really very high, so we had a perfect healing with a perfect new bone formation. And also we can have uh, uh, the use of uh, granules for a vertical regeneration together with the use of membrane, and this case is showing how RTR is easy to use in some very difficult and advanced cases as well. As a conclusion, I would say that RTR among the beta phosphatium tricalcium material is one of the uh, best products in my personal experience because it's a very safe material, fully resorbed after a reasonable period of time. It's uh, uh, easy to use because of the three different existing packages and also 
last but not least, it's a non-expensive material. Not to be too expensive means that it is more easy to be offered to our patient and that allows us to use the RTR in many more clinical cases. After that, I only want to wish to all of you in the future many, many new millimeters of regeneration.